All right, welcome to Talk Investing. I'm Tom, and as always, this is not financial advice. Today, I want to talk about Riot Platform Stock or R I O T. This is a Bitcoin mining company. They are one of the largest Bitcoin mining companies. They're the second largest by market cap. They're one of the largest by production on a monthly basis. Riot recently put out their December operational report. They've also put out some other massive, massive press releases with a lot of information in them. So I want to do an overall deep dive on Riot, and I will tell you guys. I do have two big questions for Riot. I am going to get to those later in the video. There's two issues with Riot that I think management needs to give clarity on, but I do want to try to present the full picture here, both the good and the bad. So we're going to go through the whole thing. So try and get through this as fast as I can. Everybody stick with me. If you're new to the channel, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you have not yet subscribed, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Also, if everybody could please smash the like button, we're going for 500 likes on this video. It really does help out the video a lot. It helps out the channel a lot and it is much appreciated. So let's get into it. Let's talk about Riot platforms. Okay, so I'm making this video over the weekend. Right now, the Riot closed at $14.83 on Friday. They have had a pullback. All the Bitcoin mining companies have had a pullback in their stock price over the last six or seven trading days. So Riot is no different. Currently, their market cap is at about $3 billion. I will tell you, it was higher than this. And one of the things worth noting about Riot Blockchain is for almost the entire year in 2023, this was the largest Bitcoin mining company by market cap. Somewhere near the end of the year, Marathon passed them in market cap, and they are now significantly past them. Marathon is now over $2 billion larger in market cap than Riot is, so Riot is lagging behind the competition from uh, the movement in their stock, at least. So what I want to do is take a look at a deep dive of what's going on with their company and see, is that justified? Is there some opportunity here, or do we need to be be worried about Riot. Obviously, ultimately, this is not financial advice. I'm trying to provide you guys information so you guys can make the final decision. I will let you know what I'm doing with this stock. Okay, so let's start out by getting into Riot's December operational update. Okay, Riot announces December 2023 production and operations update. Riot produces 619 Bitcoin in December of 2023, bringing the total Bitcoin production in 2023 to 6,626, while significantly expanding use of Riot unique power strategy during the year. We'll talk more about their power strategy. That really wasn't a big part of their December story, and I'll take a look at that, but this year it was a big part of their picture. Okay, quote from Jason Less, who is the CEO of the company. December's strong performance capped off a successful 2023 for Riot, with 619 Bitcoin mined during the month, representing a 12% increase over the previous month. So that is important. That's one of the things we look for. I talked about the fact that with the Bitcoin mining fees going up so dramatically in the month of December, I thought every single Bitcoin miner should have a better month in December than they did in November. So Riot did do that, and it's worth noting their exahash did not change. So with the same amount of exahash, they did improve their production by 12%. The vast majority of that was strictly due to the increase in fees that they collected. Okay, Jason continues, we are proud to close out 2023 on a high note, having completed the expansion of our Rockdale facility and significant progress on the development of our new Corsicana facility. I want to just take a quick look at what those two facilities are, because this is one of the strengths of Riot. And again, I do want to let people know, I do have two concerns with them. I am going to get to those later, but I want to go through this picture in its entirety. So let's take a look at the slide from their investor presentation from December. This goes through their two major facilities. Both of these are in Texas. So first, the Rockdale facility. So you'll see here in the notes, they say, this is the largest Bitcoin mining data center in North America. America with 700 megawatts of total capacity at Rockdale. They currently have 12.4 exahash of self-mining capacity. This 12.4 target is a target that they set over a year ago. They now finally got to this last month. It did take them much longer than expected. Riot went about a year in between new purchase orders for Bitcoin miners. We're going to go through. They have, subsequent to that, made some significant purchase orders. So that's a big part of their story. We're going to get to that next. But right now, I want to talk about their facilities. Because the thing is, this Rockdale facility, as they said, is the largest in North America at 700 megawatts. But right next to this, you're going to see the Corsicana facility. This is a second large-scale development 
development located in Corsicana, Texas, with anticipated one gigawatt of total capacity approved by ERCOT. The 700 megawatt facility they have in Rockdale is already the largest. This is going to be even larger than that. There are a lot of companies building out some large facilities in the state of Texas in particular. But having said that, with these two facilities, Riot will have by far more infrastructure than any other Bitcoin mining company, and it's not even close. So you're going to see they're not the number one producer of Bitcoin by any means. So one of my big questions is, are they going to maximize the efficiency of all of this capacity? Because currently they are not doing that. I'm going to get to that later. That's one of my big issues with this company. But with these two facilities put together, this is 1.7 gigawatts of capacity. This gives them all the capacity they need to grow for years and years to become, if they want, the potential to become by far the largest Bitcoin miner. Now, they're not the only ones with plans. Marathon has big plans as well. And Marathon currently has double the exahash rate that Riot has. So Riot does have some catching up to do from that perspective. But you can see, unlike Marathon, who really had no infrastructure, Marathon recently reported that 97% of their machines are hosted by others. They're currently making a giant effort to transition into a model that's closer to the model that Riot has. Riot is the opposite. They host all their machines. They have the largest facilities by far of any Bitcoin mining company. So you're going to see the next thing they say is expansion is underway with initial phase 400 megawatts of immersion cooled data center infrastructure under development. Okay, minor orders placed represent 26 exahash totaling 99,840 miners is enough to fill out about 600 megawatts of infrastructure. We'll get to those purchase orders later, but you can see they already have the infrastructure and are building the infrastructure to house 100% of all of the machines that they bought. Then lastly, they say mining is expected to commence in Q1 of 2024, which is important because really 2023 was not a good year for growth for Riot Blockchain. They were anticipating getting to this 12.4 exahash much earlier in the year. It took them all year. There were a few reasons why. I don't want to revisit that or relive that. If you want more information on that, you can check out my previous deep dive on Riot Riot platforms where I go through that in great detail. Okay, going back to the operation report. So where we left off was making significant progress on the development of our new Corsicana facility. So we just took a look at that. Riot reached new highs in 2023, mining 6,626 Bitcoin over the course of the year while simultaneously demonstrating the unique benefits of Riot's power strategy, generating $71.6 million of power credits or the equivalent of 2,480 Bitcoin. As a result of our industry-leading balance sheet strength, Riot is well positioned to execute on our plan to increase our self-mining hash rate to 28 exahash by the end of 2024. Again, they're currently at 12.4 exahash right now. So you can see they have big plans. I'm just going to spend a minute and talk about what those plans are and how they plan on getting from here to there. The first thing is they put out this press release on June 26. Riot purchases 7.6 exahash of next generation miners from MicroBT. Landmark deal includes an initial purchase of 33,280 miners to increase self-mining capacity to 20.1 exahash. So again, that gets them from their 12.4 to 20.1 exahash. And we know there are several Bitcoin miners that are looking to get between, you know, 17 and 20 exahash in 2024. So this is a very important step for Riot. They've been an industry leader in order to maintain that position. This was a necessary move. And again, this was back in June. They did pay $21.5 per terahash. The price actually came down after that. So a lot of other companies paid a little bit less than that including Riot. You'll see the next purchase that they made was at a significantly better price than this, but 21.5 is significantly less than what we, people were paying in the last bull cycle when most of the machines that are currently up and running were purchased. So this was already a good price. The thing is the prices did get a lot better than this. Okay, so to do a summary here, it's 33,280 machines. That's 7.6 exahash. But more importantly, the efficiency, the joules per terahash on this are 22.5 joules per terahash. So that is better than the latest and greatest XPs that were out. Now, again, the next group of machines you're going to see are even better than this. So one of the keys going into having is for all of these companies to increase their energy efficiency, and that is measured by joules per terahash or watts per terahash. So getting down to 22 and a half is a significant improvement. Okay, then they put out another press release. So fast forward to December 4th, 2023. Riot purchases 18 exahash and secures a long-term supply of hash rate, 
from MicroBT. So Riot exercises a purchase option on 18 exahash. Remember the last purchase they just did was 7.6 exahash. This is an additional 18 exahash past that. So the last one got them to 20.1 exahash. With this additional 18, this would get them to 38 exahash. So again, this would put them back in a position where they're vying to be one of the largest Bitcoin miners by exahash of all the publicly traded Bitcoin mining companies. Okay, so a couple of key things in this press release. The first thing I'm gonna go to is here you're gonna see in Q1 of 2024, they expect deployment of the previously announced purchased 33,280 micro BT miners. That's the purchase order we just looked at. So those are gonna be implemented in Q1. So that is important. Again, they wanna keep up with the competition. So somewhere around the time of the halving, they should get themselves from 12.4 exahash up to 20 exahash. That will both greatly increase their exahash and increase their efficiency. So as the halving hits, it's gonna be important to be at that level to remain profitable and cash flow positive. Then if we go down to the summary of this 18 exahash of machines, you're gonna see it's 66,560 machines. That's 18 exahash. And this time the efficiency of these machines is 19 joules per terahash. So that's even better than the last round of machines. So. Overall, they will continue to decrease their joules per terahash, which is increasing their efficiency. So they're looking to get from 12.4 exahash to 38 exahash. And really you're gonna see, they're looking to do that by the end of 2025. So they've given us some clarity on getting to 20 exahash, what they expect to do by the end of Q1 2024. But as to when they get to 38 exahash, they have not given us that clarity yet. We will later get to their target for the end of the year 2024, and they are targeting 28 exahash by the end of the year 2024. Back to the December press release. So the very next sentence, as a result of our industry leading balance sheet strength, Riot will be positioned to execute on our plan to increase our self-mined hash rate to 28 exahash by the end of 2024. So we can see they're at 12.4 right now. We know they're looking to get to 20.1 by the end of Q1 and 28 exahash by the end of 2024. So if they can stay on that plan, that would be a very, very solid plan for Riot. That would keep them among the industry leaders. You know, that would keep them vying for, you know, that first or second place spot, which is where Riot and Marathon have been. You know, they've been vying for that top spot over the last several years. So this would keep them in that race. Okay, so if I skip ahead later, you're gonna see upon full Full deployment in 2025, Riot anticipates a total self-mining hash rate capacity of 38 exahash. So that's a little bit of a generic statement. We don't know specifically exactly when they plan to get from 28 to 38. I'm sure uh, more information to follow. Okay, this next part is very important as well. This is a big, big part of why I think Riot is a strong company. They go through 2023 year-end liquidity. Riot ended the year with approximately $590 million in cash. So that is the most cash of any Bitcoin miner and 7,362 in unencumbered Bitcoin Bitcoin on the balance sheet, representing total liquidity of approximately $901 million at the end of 2023. Those are unaudited numbers, and that's based on the year-end market price of Bitcoin. To put that in comparison with their closest rival, Marathon at the end of the year did announce they're at around $1 billion in liquidity. So here's Riot right in the same neighborhood at $901 million in liquidity. So these two companies really in most ways have separated themselves from the pack. They are different companies. And again, I'm trying to go through some of those differences in this video. One of which is you can see Riot has all of their own facilities. So from an infrastructure standpoint, they're already at where Marathon is trying to get to. Now, conversely, to be fair, Marathon's production numbers are drastically better than Riot's at this point, and I will talk about that later. That's one of my big concerns with Riot. They are underperforming operationally. Okay, just take a quick look at a few charts that I put together and I track for each Bitcoin miner. If we take a look at Riot's Bitcoin mined by month, you're gonna see, you know, this part of the chart looks good. From August of 2023, Every single month, they've continued to mine more Bitcoin than they did in the previous month. So that piece of the puzzle I like, that is a good trend and that trend needs to continue. Having said that, it is not enough Bitcoin. One of the reasons that I say that is if you take a look at August, for instance, and August and September were very low numbers. August, they mined 333 Bitcoin. But back in August, they got about $31 million in energy credits. So if I go back to their monthly operational report from the month of December, you're gonna see in December, power credits was zero. 
Now, they do have another source of credits, demand response credits, which is also power credits, was 0.5 million. So these two put together were $500,000. That is versus $31.7 million in the month of August. So you can see this continues to get less and less. Last month, the two of these put together was $1.9 million. So, you know, it's almost a quarter of that this month. The next several months, these numbers are going to be very close to zero. Texas's grid gets pushed to its max in the summer because obviously the heat in the summer in Texas is the bigger problem. There are other Bitcoin mining companies in other geographical locations where the winter is the more difficult part. But for Riot, because they are in Texas, it's the summer months where they're curtailed. And because they have fixed price purchase power agreements, they get to sell a lot of that power back to the grid for big energy credits. Why is that important? If I go to a slide in their investor presentation, you'll see low cost producer. Year to date direct cost to produce one Bitcoin, $5,537. Now this considers the energy credits and they did get, I think $76 million in energy credits in the year 2023. That was their all time record. So obviously those energy credits, they get to use to pay off their energy bill as they mine Bitcoin going forward. So their price per Bitcoin is by far far the lowest of any Bitcoin mining company. So in that regard, that is a very positive thing. This is actually less than half the next closest competitor. But the question that I would have is, are these energy credits reliable? Can we expect them to get the same amount of energy credits going forward? 2023 was a record year for their energy credits. So, you know, I'm just not sure what the future holds. It's a piece of uncertainty as an investor that, you know, I don't know the answer to. So if I go to a chart of the month of December, all the top 10 Bitcoin miners have now put out their December results. If we look at these results, the first thing you're going to notice is Marathon is off the charts. That's for another video. In fact, if you're interested in what Marathon did, I just did a deep dive a few days ago. So if you want to check that out on the channel, you can go check that out. I go into exact detail how Marathon was able to mine such an astronomical amount of Bitcoin in the month of December. But I'm going to look at this chart in a different way, taking Core Scientific and Marathon out of this. If we look at this chart, if we look at Riot versus the rest of the competition, you're going to see CleanSpark actually with less exahash. CleanSpark has 10.08 exahash. Remember, Riot has 12.4 exahash. So with less exahash, CleanSpark actually mined 100 more Bitcoin than Riot did. Now, to be fair, Riot did mine more Bitcoin than all of the rest of the top 10. And it was pretty significantly more, right? There's at least 150 Bitcoin drop off to get to the rest of the pack. And there's a bunch here competing for that next spot. But my issue with this is if you take the top 10 and really including Core Scientific, the top 11 Bitcoin mining companies by production, I do an efficiency rating and, and it's very simple. It's basically just the number of Bitcoin mined by the number of exahash that a company has. The lowest of all the rest of these companies in the month of December was mining 65 Bitcoin per exahash. Most of these top 10 companies were between 70 and 75 Bitcoin per exahash. That was a little higher than usual based on the additional fees in the month of December. My issue is out of the top 11 Bitcoin mining companies, Riot was in dead last once again, which they've been in for almost every single month of the year. Whereas their competition was between 65 Bitcoin per exahash and 75 Bitcoin per exahash, Riot was at 50 Bitcoin per exahash. So that's a fairly significant difference and it's, they are lagging behind. Now for a lot of months, I was able to rationalize that because they were getting millions or tens of millions of dollars in energy credits. So, you know, in order to get those energy credits, they have to turn off their Bitcoin mining machines and sell energy back to the grid. So if their mining machines are off, obviously they're going to be mining less Bitcoin per exahash. December was basically a month where they did not get paid for any curtailment. So they should have been very near full capacity. Their uptime should have been in line with all of their competition. So one of my two big questions for Riot would be, what is the reason that they are lagging behind in efficiency operationally? Why are they only mining 50 Bitcoin per exahash? Now, there may be an answer to this. My issue is they haven't given us the answer. So if I knew the answer, if this was a part of their overall energy strategy and and the deal is that they are going to get paid big, big dollars in the summer months when the grid needs the energy, but they're going to agree to self-curtail the rest of the year. And that's just a part of the equation. Well, then I'll be able to do the math and going forward, you know, if they're going to be mining a little bit less per exahash, 
I'll be able to run the numbers. And I do think this could be a highly profitable company and still be a hugely successful company if that's the case. And I don't know that that's the case. I think that there is an issue. This is my opinion. I have no information other than the information that we just talked about, which is that month after month after month, they lag in efficiency. So I do think it would be nice for them to come out and just explain, is this a short-term situation and they're going to correct this and going forward as they get to 20 exahash, 28 exahash, and then ultimately 38 exahash, are they looking to get more in line from an efficiency efficiency standpoint with their peers, which would increase the number of Bitcoin that they mine, and obviously as a result, increase their profitability as a company. Or is this the norm for them? And this is what we can expect going forward. So whichever one the answer is, the uncertainty is not a good thing. We need to know the answer. Obviously, I would vastly prefer to hear that there's some specific reasons why this is happening. They're working on that and they're, and this is going to improve over the course of time. And then the other thing obviously is even if they say that, we're going to have to see it to believe it. So for me, I will be watching this on a month to month basis to see if this improves over time. Very quickly, my other issue with this company is they have a lot of their resources allocated towards hosting other people's machines. They continue to lose a massive amount of money in their hosting. So I will be looking their financial statements for the end of of the year will be coming out shortly. I'll be looking to see how they did in the fourth quarter. Did they lose money hosting Bitcoin mining machines again? If so, that's another one where I would like management to just come out and say, this is an issue. It's going to last for this much longer, whether that's another quarter, another year, whatever the case may be. Let's quantify that, find out what it is and see how we move forward. Those are my two big issues with Riot. You know, I did want to mention the things that I do struggle with as a shareholder. I do have a position in this company. This is not financial advice. I will never tell you to buy a stock or sell a stock. You guys need to make your own decisions. I'm just trying to go through this information and provide you with as much relevant information as I can to help help you guys do your due diligence and make your own buying decisions. So lastly, just to take a look at Riot's chart, the one thing I want to point out on Riot's chart, this is Riot on the one day time frame. So you can see from December 27th to Friday, January 5th, they did pull back about 20%. All of the Bitcoin miners had a fairly similar pullback. In fact, a lot of them were even worse than this. So, you know, as an industry, this did have a bit of a sell-off over the last six or seven trading days. So that's not what I'm most interested in. The big number that I want to look at is Riot hit its high for the year in 2023 back in July. All the Bitcoin miners peaked in the middle of July on July 14th for the most part. On that day, Bitcoin was trading at around $38,000. Obviously, we are much higher than that on Bitcoin. We're somewhere in the $44,000 range. Several of the Bitcoin miners are now above their July highs. Some of them are significantly above their July highs. Riot, however, is one of the Bitcoin miners that is lagging. They are still nearly 40% under their highs from July of 2023. So my first price target is, you know, I'm looking for them just to get back to their highs from July of 2023, particularly in the first quarter, if we see them over the next three months implement their plan and get from 12.4 exahash to 20.1 exahash, if they do that, if they continue to improve on their number of Bitcoin mined per month, you know, to me, this is a very short term price target if those things happen. And obviously if Bitcoin stays healthy, so that's 40% to the upside rate there. I would say this company is a company that is primed for potentially a double in that period of time if they can perform operationally. So we do need some answers. We need to see some improved performance, but it is important to remember, I wanna leave you with these thoughts. This company has zero debt and they have over $900 million in cash and liquidity. So they're financially one of the strongest Bitcoin mining companies. They've set themselves up to have huge success in the coming years. The last lingering question is, can they improve on their operations on a month to month basis? If the answer to that is yes, then there's the potential for there to be big upside in this company. If the answer to that is no, or you believe the answer to that is no, then obviously this is a company you would not be interested in investing in. So these are some of the questions that, you know, each individual investor needs to make their own decision and answer. The last thing I'll show you is there is some support back in the middle of August when Bitcoin was around $35,000, Riot was trading down under $10. So that would represent about a 35% pullback if Riot was to pull back into that range, either because Bitcoin was underperforming or Riot's monthly operational reports were a disappointment, say in January, February, March of 2024.
So we'll have to wait and see what happens. Those are all things Riot Platforms as I see them. So that's all I got for you now on Riot Platforms. If you made it this far, please remember to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.